Uh, one of the things that we're really trying to achieve here with uh, this M2E program is to strengthen and emphasize the connections between the media and communications industry and economics. And there's no shortage of hand-wringing about the future of newspapers and the future of journalism. Uh, but what there isn't enough of, really, is kind of a rigor rigorous analysis of the challenges and opportunities that the industry faces. And that's why we've invited Ken Doctor here. Short story, in 10 years, the newspaper industry in the U.S. is now taking in half as much revenue as it did 10 years ago. That's about $25 billion a year less now than 10 years ago, every year, and still sliding. So the institutional capacity of having a newsroom of 500 or 1,000 or 200 in a, in a smaller city meant that you were a player at the table. These companies are no longer the players that they were, and that's a societal problem. This little metric uh, to compare, $7.3 billion in the third quarter revenue for Google, $2.2 billion in profit. Gannett, and this is, this is representational here, so you can't read Gannett, right? Gannett, the largest U.S. newspaper company, $1.3 billion in revenue, roughly a sixth in revenue. Profits, though, only $125 million roughly one-seventeenth of the profits. Consequently, you can see that. So that's one company. You could do a similar thing with Apple. You could do it with Facebook. But this is the largest U.S. newspaper company. Staff cutting is continuing. Digital revenue is up. One CEO said to me last week, he said, we're up 30%. Only problem is we need to be up 80%. So they're getting there back into the teens, but that's largely because how they're selling products rather than a real huge growth. And newspapers are the only media type not really recovering after the recession. Even magazines are positive again. Newspapers still are not positive. Look at this number. NewYorkTimes.com in the US registers about 30 million unique visitors per month. In print, they have about a million, a little less than a million now in terms of single copy and subscriptions. About 3% three, about three, 3 of this. What the New York Times is trying to do with its new plan, when it announces its paid plan, is get about 3%. If they got 3%, they'd be ecstatic. 3% of those 30 million uniques, 900,000 people, to pay them something for digital access. 900,000 is almost the same number. And probably, they don't know, we don't know, I guess 80% of the people who are going to pay them are our print readers as well. So even though you've got this huge 30 million number, you're still back to the same kind of core that paid you in the old world. And so in a sense, we have a back to the future scenario developing. A tablet is so interesting. Um, basically, I think my headline on it is that it's certifying this new news anywhere era. So. The last three, four years, we've all started using smartphones. iPhone has been a phenomenon. It's a very interesting kind of thing. News companies haven't made much money on it. And, and really, news companies have thought of it as, have thought of this era since um, really the early 90s as, we do two things now. We do print and we do online. We don't really like to do online, but we do online because we have to do online and we'll kind of figure it out that's our business. <coughs> now, it's really changing. It is, we're a news company, and we put out the news lots of different ways. And so you got the tablet, you got the smartphone, you have online, meaning desktop, laptop, and you have print. And soon we'll have the TV, whether Google figures it out or not. 70 million tablets are projected to be sold in the U.S. in 2011, 2012. 70 million. 50 million of those iPads, 20 million other. And then we have the push given by the, the Apple subscription policy. Apple has not announced this policy, but it has talked to many, many publishers who are all acting on the belief that the policy is clear and it will be formally announced probably when they announce the iPad 2. And it is simply that if you are a news company, you can sell access a subscription access to a digital product, mainly the iPad, but also a smartphone. You can do that, but you can't do it for the iPad and have unrestricted access on the browser. 
So if you, if you are free on the browser, you can sell an iPad product, but you've got to sell it through the Apple Store. You've got to give 30% to Apple, and you get very little data or customer relationship. Faced with the want to get more reader revenue from digital sources, to transition with readers as they move from print to tablet, consequently the Apple policy is both pushing and shoving publishers in this direction of saying, let's restrict browser access, let's offer all access. Pay me one price, you can have access across the board. So will the readers accept this proposal? We don't know. And is this, is this a play for basically taking print readers who are older readers and getting them to value digital access differently and saying we're going to get a tiny percentage of younger readers who are already used to getting things for free? We don't know. Newspapers are becoming resellers. They're selling search engine monetization, excuse me, search engine um, marketing, search engine optimization. Facebook, they're selling mobile, they're reselling Groupon, uh, you name it. They're reselling everything that they can. They have changed, they, and they are in the process of changing everything they're doing from being an advertising company that sells space to being a consultative selling company that says, how can I help you get customers? There's worldwide distribution, which is very cool, and we all love it that we can get media everywhere, yet there's no economic model largely for monetizing, making money off of your content in other countries. A big problem. For instance, The Guardian, a very well recognized and, and, and well regarded uh, newspaper out of Britain. The Guardian, The Times in, in London, uh, The Telegraph, one third of their online readership is in the UK, one third's in the US, and one third's around the world. Only one third's in their traditional market. Largely, they can only make money because of how they figured out how to sell advertising and how the internet economy works, still largely on a national basis. But look what they've gotten. They've got now two-thirds of their readers um, away from their home market. New York Times is about 40% about of their readers are all around the globe. Yet they're focused on how they make money from the ones in the U.S. for the same reason. But this is another huge opportunity. Let's look at the entertainment models. Very good, especially uh, being in LA, the entertainment capital. Exactly what you hear conjectured about uh, with New York Times today, they're gonna do this, they're gonna do that. This is the model. HBO, Comcast, um, Netflix, same thing. Very, very simple. Netflix says to you now, you know, forget that DVD stuff, you know, just send us $8 a month, automatic, over the bank account, and you can access our stuff anytime you want on your, on your laptop, your desktop, or your tablet. And if you still want those DVDs, you know, we got this other plan, about $8. And this applies to content creation, demand media, IPO coming very soon. Demand media has really turned a lot of newspaper thinking on, on its end, and it's because of how they look at data. They're run by advertising guys who say, Let's see what the advertisers want to advertise. What kind of content would help them reach the right audience? Let's go create the content over here. Let's go find the best people to write it over here, figure out who they are, and put it all in a database. So database, 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 database. Newspaper companies are slowly understanding this and slowly understanding how you can use similar principles and merge them with long-established editorial principles. So with this, this inflection point, because all these things are coming together, we have essentially replacement journalism. What will the replacements look like? We don't know. There are motley replacements in history. But we're getting replacement journalists very, very quickly at this point. We're getting replacement owners. We're getting replacement devices. And we're getting replacement funding. This is all happening simultaneously. And nobody really has a clue as to how it's going to end up. And lastly, 11 big questions here. Um, how much faster does print circulation drop because of tablet reading? Tablets are going to hasten the, uh, the, the demise of print. But we don't know how quickly. And we don't know how newspaper companies are going to adjust to it. Will all, all access provide a new bottom? Might it work? If it works and provides a stability, then you can grow from there. 
where are those tablet reading minutes going to come from? It's great there's 13 minutes more reading so far, the early adopters. That won't last. They got to come from somewhere. They come from print. They could come from they could come from uh, broadcast. They could come from watching TV. We don't know. Uh, who wins the aggregation game on the tablet? Everybody who won news in the uh, first decade of uh, th this uh, this century and millennium are aggregators. All the first products on the tablet, single single uh, title products, uh, with the exception of Flipboard and and one or two others. Uh, on Go announced an aggregation product uh, finally today. There are going to be a lot of people trying to play the aggregation game. How many advertisers do companies have? So this whole marketing services and the 92% and the 8%. How many more advertisers do newspaper companies get? Or any news companies? How fast does this roll up of dailies happen? Is it possible to put together the three newspaper companies in LA? And who's going to stop them? How much does the New York Times uh, experiments in a regional get expanded? It's worked at a very low level. It works very well for them business-wise and in terms of uh, readership. Could they do it in 10 cities and could they do it five times bigger? What kinds of combinations? So we've got all this new media. We've got this old media over here that is rolling up and trying to roll up. We've got the new media up here that is just kind of chaotic. What if they got together in some new ways at the same time these guys are doing a roll up? Which I think is going to happen in the next two or three years. Both those things are going to happen. How much more cutting of journalist jobs will there be? 14,000 cut in the last five years. How much will local broadcasters continue to gain in the digital world on print? And lastly, what's your question? <laughs> 